You're listening to the Business and Life Podcast, where seven days a week, proven entrepreneurs share their success stories, failures, and give you true value on how you can build a great business and an awesome life with your host, Mike Olivas. All right, Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Mike. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. So tell our listeners something uh, unique about yourself. Yeah, well, I'm a motivational speaker and coach for small businesses and startups, and it's been one heck of a journey, man. It starts from being a personal trainer way back about 20 years ago to the work I do now. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty unique, and it's, uh, it's special. So looking forward to chatting with you here today. Awesome. So, so tell us what, what you speak about. What is the company about? What is the company name? What is the value it brings to the marketplace? Yeah, so it's all under my name, Mike Gonsalves, G-O-N-C as in cat, A-L-V as in Victor, E-S dot com. Um, it's a tough name, but it's Portuguese, but uh, that's, that's <laughs> the name of it, MikeGonsalves.com. And uh, yeah, I help small businesses and startups when it comes to creating a culture of excellence uh, because at the end of the day, the small businesses, the, the startups, they want to win. They want to make the money. They want to go public. They want to secure the Series E, Series B funding. Awesome. Sure. Good for them. But the employee also wants to be happy. They want to be fulfilled. They want satisfaction, right? So the thing is, it's like we have to make sure we're taking care of both of them. We have to make sure we're taking care of the, the customer, uh, excuse me, the employee, make sure they're happy and fulfilled so they show up and deliver and vice versa. The company must show up, take care of the employee. So they both win. So I come in and make sure I convey that the importance of that and then cre- help create that culture of excellence through the work that I do through, again, my keynote um, speeches that I give and as well as the workshops that I provide. And how long have you had the company? Oh man, this has been an evolutionary thing. Uh, I would sure. say probably for the last four years, uh, cool. I've been doing this level of work. Yeah. Okay. So t- tell me a, a journey, a journey speed bump or rock bottom that you hit. So was there a time where you felt you hit rock bottom and, and tell the business and life listeners about how you were able to get out of that, how obviously what you do now, sometimes people's challenge becomes their passion, their why and how they end up doing things. Right. But what was, what was the challenge that you were able to overcome? Well, the biggest challenge is probably back in, I would say 2008, as I was kind of navigating, you know, the work that I did and how I did it. And, um, you know, the economy kind of tanked around that time, 2010, I was, I was having a business that I was getting going off the ground. And truth be told, Mike, I was chasing money, which a lot of entrepreneurs find themselves doing. So I was chasing money, looking to make a dollar first, you know, a different second. And that was the biggest, you know, aha moment for me where I I ended up losing about $30,000 of my own money invested, friends' money invested, investors, um, because I was chasing money. I wasn't really looking to serve my customer. And so because I did that, I fell on my face, lost a ton of money. But I learned that, you know what, Mike, chill out, relax with the money, (laughs) make a difference first, and then a dollar second. And when I reversed that, that was the biggest aha, awaken a moment. And ever since I've done that, you know, this, my business has continued to climb because again, I'm shooting first to make a difference first than a dollar second. Yep. I say it and you probably, a lot, all of our listeners are, if they're tired of hearing it, that's okay. They're going to keep hearing it until it gets stuck in their head is that you got to enjoy the journey and not, not, not just continuously look for the result, right? The journey will get you there. And especially if you have a passion for it, the dollar sign will come. It's a measurement of success. It's not the only reason that there is a success behind your business without uh, That's awesome. So Mike, you, you, uh, you went through some struggles, obviously already. You're an entrepreneur, you get it. Why do you think there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that you see within uh, the people that you speak to, the businesses that you engage with, that you feel some of them maybe either quit on their dreams or just stop doing the business altogether? That's a great question. I think two, <clears throat> two things. One is because they're impatient now more than ever. We want success overnight. And truth be told, sometimes I want it overnight too, but I've, yeah. I've done enough work where I know it takes time. So number one, we get impatient. We think it's an overnight, you know, success is, it's not an overnight thing. It, you know, it takes, takes time. So one, be patient, keep, you know, trust the process and believe that it's, it is the journey. Like you just said, Mike, that's number one. And number two is because now more than ever with social media, we compare ourselves, right? We compare someone else's, you know, chapter 20, like they say to our chapter one, forget comparison, forget the next guy, forget the next girl, the next business, just do your thing, do it the way you do it. Yes. Learn from the experts who have come before you. I, I hate the word expert. Learn from your mentors, the one you respect, the one you want to be like, the one you want to emulate. So learn from them and also realize if you look at them, you'll realize they didn't get there overnight either. So one is we, we lack patience. So one, be patient. And two, don't compare yourself. Do your own thing, follow your own journey, and you're going to get there in your own you know, dedicated timeline. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. You, you, everyone is worried, you know, worry about your inside versus comparing yourself to everyone's outside, right? 100%. So many people are, are doing that, especially today with social media. It's worse and worse. 
um, in terms of the judgment, the judgment that people are giving themselves. So I love that you mentioned that. And that's a total good sound bomb on just understanding that trying to figure out what people's why is and what their business is, what behind that is, what behind that is and how to do that, research it, Google it, understand it and try to get there and understand it might evolve. That might, that why might change, right? Your business as well might, will pivot. It might pivot to a different kind of angle, but it's all about the same journey of understanding that you're helping people. Um, what are you currently excited about? Give me some ideas about what you're currently excited about within your business right now, Mike. Well, I'm excited about the impact I can make with the work that I do. So for example, I'm often asked, well, Mike, why small businesses? Why startups? Why are you yeah. going there? Why not the big boys, right? Why not Fortune 100, 500, 1000? Great question. And the reason being, and the reason why I'm excited now more than ever is because the work I do now, this is what keeps me going. My why, if you will, is because yeah. I'm looking to make an impact. It's a legacy. It's something I want to do. It's something that I think that, you know, the fruits of my labor probably won't be recognized in my lifetime, Mike, if I'm going to be quite frank with you. But if I can lay the foundation for these small businesses and startups that will be the next Amazons, the next Google, the next Facebook, you know, I, I'm hoping to convey this, this level of, you know, of, of excellence and how we go about doing that. And not just taking care of, you know, the employee, but taking care of the person. And I think if we can change the way we do things, the way we do business, where we really do care about, you know, culture and passion and people, and we really hone in on that. And if we can start taking these small businesses and startups and making that the new way, as these guys come up and create these massive companies, that can be the culture that, you know, exists and becomes, you know, the norm, if you will. Because the data suggests over and over and over again that if you take care of people, you focus on passion, you know, on spirit and, you know, culture, it's, it shows, it, time and time again, it shows results. But meanwhile, we keep still doing it the old school way of like, hey, you know, let's go circle. What's your commitment for today? Let's put up a scoreboard. How much do we bring in? And no one gives a crap about the fact that, hey, you just had a baby. Let's go support you at your, at your race. You just had a race. You're donating, donating money for what? Let's all come in and just, you know, help support, support the person. So, I'm excited about making that the new norm, making, you know, right. taking care of your people, the new norm. If we can do that, we change the game. Life Nation, we're all striving towards different goals. Maybe your goal is to finally quit the eight to five time, quit your job or take the you know, next step with your existing business. Whatever the goal may be, regardless of your reasons, if you are serious about taking the next step and finally trying to build the life that you deserve, the life that you want to live, take the leap of faith. Go to michaellevis.com and let's discuss your goals and life. It's 100% free. There's no obligation. It's M-I-K-E-O-L-I-V-A-S.com. Schedule a quick call. I'd love to help. I think that's awesome. How do you, I, I, I think you just took it to another level, which I think is important because you just mentioned things that I think most companies, whether even small companies are becoming trying or they just know how they know the corporate world, I guess, and they kind of go that corporate route. Um, and I'm not saying the corporate world is not necessary. I'm saying a lot of things they probably do is unnecessary, but what I, what I do see from a small business and a mid-sized business perspective is those companies that thrive, um, really care about their employees, um, and really care about their customers and, and, and or clients, or they might even name them by name. Right. And those things and those real relationships and transparencies definitely have a awesome end result. How do you feel? Mike, if someone's listening to this podcast right now and, and our business and life listeners think and there's a business owner saying, well, maybe Mike can come in and help me out. How would you help them out specifically? How would you tell them, like, here are the core things that I can really tangibly help your company with? Yeah, well, there's four ways that I go about doing it. <laughs> Excuse me. And, awesome. you know, there's, there's, a whole, there's a whole saying that, you know, hey, not all things that matter can be measured. Not all things that can be measured matter. I actually think that all things that are measured do matter. Some just matter more than others. Let's be okay. honest here. Yeah. So. I do it in four ways. I make sure I come in and we, we have this, we have a, a, a workshop where it's not just the employees or it's not just the leadership team, if we will, because I believe in creating leaders of one at all levels. I don't care if you're the CEO, mid-level manager, janitor, you're all leaders. That's what I come in and make sure I create that culture of excellence, a leadership mindset in every single person. So we do that. We create leaders of one at every level. And the way we, we define that is a leader is a leader of one is someone who's committed to doing what they must do to have the results, the successes they've decided they must have, not would like to have, not should have, not could have, must have. Yeah. So we create leaders of one at every level. It starts with number one, creating a champion's mindset. It starts there because how and what we think determines how and what we you know, do and essentially determines our, our results. Okay. Creating a champion's mindset. Number two, successful goal setting, not goal setting. There's a difference. Successful goal setting. When we do that correctly, we have an 80% higher chance of achieving our goals. 80%. Number three, establishing winning habits. It's safe to say, Mike, you and I, we're products of the habits we maintain every day. 
That's either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on our habits. We come in, we make sure we identify the right habits and we establish those day in, day out. And lastly, staying motivated for success. Probably one of the toughest things to do. And I don't mean just in bad times when we fail, we hit failure, obstacles, hurdles, challenges, stress, et cetera. I also mean in the good times when we had the best quarter, the best month. How do we keep going to reach that next milestone? So staying motivated for success. Those are the four pillars that I come in, I work on to make sure that the executive team and the employees are all firing on the same cylinders. I love that. That's awesome. So guys, to recap, we create champions mindset. Create a champion's mindset. That's number one. Successful goal setting. That's number two. Establish winning habits. Number three. And number four, the final stage is staying motivated for success, which is which definitely is going to happen on every one of those stages, right? Keep it, keep yeah, in, right. Keeping the fire alive for sure. Exactly. It's, it's uh, sometimes tough, but that's awesome. I love those four stages. So if you're listening, if you're a small business owner and or mid-sized business and can use that kind of help within your employees and within your, just to create, recreate the infrastructure sometimes of the business. I think that's, that's an awesome value to bring in Mike. Thank you. Appreciate that. So what's the, uh, what's the end game for Mike? I mean, what is it for you? Is it, it what do you vision the company becoming? How do you vision that really taking a big part of the life that you want to live, Mike? Yeah, well, I mean, it's just doing more of the same, right? It's, it's, it's just never, there's no end game. This is, this is what I do till, till I take my last breath. I mean, that's just the, the truth. It's what I believe in. It's my passion. It's my why. I must get up and do this work. It's not an option for you. It's, for me, it's a must. So, yeah. you know, the big, the, big, uh, the big picture is just continuing to do this. You know, I'd love to get it to a point where we, where we can have a big, massive conference, bring in people, bring in, you know, thought leaders, even though I really don't like that word that much, but sure. bring in people who are, you know, the, the, the experts, if you will, quote unquote experts at this, who believe the same things that I believe as far as like making an impact through culture, through passion, through caring about your employees, you know, so, but if I can just keep doing the work that I do, meaning putting out the content that I put out, coming to the companies, having this conversation, whether it's via a keynote, whether it's via a half a day workshop or a full day workshop, which is the work that I do now, if I can just continue to do that, that alone, I'm going to make an impact. So, you know, cause I believe a rising tide lifts all boats. If I can help one company, that company is going to help the next, going to help the yeah. next, going to help the next. We're all in it together, Mike, you know that. So I'm just going to keep doing more of what I'm doing. Awesome. Yeah. We're all here to help. We're all here dropping value bombs and sound bombs and sound bites, you name it, whatever you want to call it. That's right. Mike dropping, if you will. Like, I love that, Mike. And I think that's definitely important for all of us as a community is just simply the bottom line is that you mentioned something that a lot of our listeners probably are hearing over and over again to the people that I am interviewing, which is impact. Like that's the end game is how can I create more impact? Sometimes it's when the masses, some people want to do it on a more, uh, you know, let's say personal one-on-one level. Um, and that's fine too. But the, the bottom line is that um, it's, it's awesome. It feels great. And it's a win-win across the board. Uh, 100%. On a final question here, what is your, what, uh, before I actually ask the final question, Mike, where can people find you? Uh, what do you have going on? What, where they can they find you if they're interested in, in um, bringing you on board? Yeah, I always say that the best place to go is my website, Mike Gonsalves. Again, that's G-O-N-C-A-L-V-E-S, MikeGonsalves.com. All my information is there. I'm also um, on LinkedIn, so you can find me on LinkedIn as well under my same name. Um, those are probably the two best places to find me. But yeah, my website is the best. Perfect. Okay. And <clears throat> before we part, give us some one of your just your best piece of parting advice. If you, advice, if you had to give one piece of advice to our entrepreneurs and business and life listeners that are hustling, that are hustling to start a company, want to start a company and or are in the middle of their business. What would that be? Yeah. And I think you hit upon it earlier, earlier. So it's number one is being patient. I mean, if you have a vision, if you have this belief and, and you know, this is what I'm here to do, um, go after it. Like you have your gifts. You, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, what your gifts are, you know what they are. You, you really do. Even if you, you, you've probably been kind of keeping them down low, or people haven't been telling you that that's your gift. You know what your gifts are. Go all in on your gifts. One, two, be patient. Like you said earlier, Mike, be patient. Keep mm-hmm. going, keep going, keep going. And realize that it is the journey. It, it could be cliche, if you will, but it's not cliche. It's all about the journey. And I'll leave it with this. It's my mentor, the late Jim Rohn, has he always used to say, it's like success, if we're all after it, which we are, success isn't something that we pursue. Success is something we attract by who we become. And the only way we become who we become is in the journey. So trust the journey, love the journey, welcome the journey. And as you become who you are meant to be, success will follow. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. Hey, I really appreciate you jumping on the show today, dropping your knowledge and of course, what you're doing out there in the industry. Of course, Mike. Thanks so much for having me. All the best. Thank you. Life Nation, you got to remember that in order for things to change, you must change. In order for things to get better, 
you must get better. You just got better by hanging out with me, Michael Lebus, and the Business and Life Nation. So come back tomorrow because I'm here dropping sound bombs seven days a week, baby. If you'd like to subscribe, please do so you can take action and execute. See you tomorrow.